So today we will learn about multi stage impulse generator. Okay. Till yesterday we were on single stage impulse generator, right? Only one uh, impulse generating unit. So now we are going to see multi stage impulse generator. And for that, first of all, we should know why why it is needed, right? We already have a single stage impulse generator that we were discussing till now. And what is the need of multi stage impulse generator? The problem is that whenever you are going beyond around 200 kV, let me say, then some of the factors starts to make problems. One factor is that uh, the circuit elements, the circuit elements will become what? The circuit elements size will increase. The circuit element size will increase. Why it will increase? Obviously, you know that. As your high voltage rating changes, then the insulation or uh, uh, whatever gap is needed or whatever insulation is needed, that will increase. And based on that, the size of the equipment also will increase. As your means or not the size of the whole equipment, but even the each of the circuit element will increase. Like if you are thinking about a 100 kV uh, capacitor and a 200 kV capacitor, then obviously in a 200 kV capacitor, the size of the capacitor will be higher. So that way it will create a problem. Then another problem is that we should have high voltage DC, right? And we cannot just supply that uh, very high amount of, or it is hard to generate. High voltage DC generation itself will become a problem when you are going, whenever, what, whenever your voltage is increasing. So that is our second problem, right? And the third problem is that you have spark gaps, right? The spark gaps are there. And after a particular higher voltage, this spark gaps means uh, for a two, uh, above 200 kV, for a 1000 kV, let me say, if you have a spark gap, but still you can send, you cannot say that it is reliable, that you are making a distance for 1000 kV. For 100 kV, it will be reliable, for, but when it comes 1000 kV and all, it will not be that reliable spark gap. And another problem is that your uh, corona discharges can happen. Corona discharges can happen in, in the lead center when you, each of your component is of such a such a high voltage rating. So due to all these problems, we have to think about our multi impulse generator because when I say lightning impulse and all, we are talking about like 1400 kV or 1000 kV impulse impulse generation and. To generate that, we cannot use our single stage impulse generator. We have to go for multi stage impulse generator. Right. So, so with that thought, uh, people started working, and in 1923, uh, an, uh, an engineer called Marx, okay, Marx uh, came up with an idea. In 1923, Marx came up with an idea, and that generator is called as Marx generator. Okay. 1923, Marx came up with an idea and that generator is called as Marx generator. This is not called Marx, okay. It's another word. So, Marx, uh, 1923, it is called as Marx generator. Let us see uh, the so how the circuit works. Basically, uh, this Marx generator circuit, it consists of three sections, okay. One is what? One is our high voltage generation. So, that is the DC generation part and that is done with nothing but Cockroft, this is already uh, taught to you, right? Cockroft Walton circuit. Okay. Our normal uh, high voltage DC circuit. So, first part is comprising of what? DC generation unit, which is nothing but what? Cockroft Walton circuit. And second part, this is the main uh, component here, and that is the voltage multiplying session. Voltage multiplying, voltage multiplying session. And the third part, the third part is called as wave shaping section. Third part is called as wave shaping section. Understood. So basically a Marx generator comprises of three parts. One is the DC generator, DC generation section, which is what, which is nothing but the cockroach Walton circuit. Then you have the voltage multiplier section. Okay, that, that is the main component. We, we will deal with the working of that now. And then we have the wave shaping section. Okay, as the uh, name indicates, you have a high voltage DC, and during uh, while going through voltage multiplier section, you are making that high voltage. Like let us say we have a V voltage here. Then uh, while coming the voltage multiplier, we will make it times like n times V. Okay, then that uh, then we have a wave shaping section. Uh, particularly for this impulse generator, whether it is lightning or switching, we should have what uh, we should uh, have a. 
uh, what we should uh, determine whether of what 1.2 bar uh, 120 microsecond or there is some range for, there is some some value for the time delay right or the rise time and uh, uh, rise time and the, the tail time okay that uh, as per standard so for uh, that for that to have we will have a wave shaping section section as well okay so that are the, the these are the functions of the three parts Right. In a single section, we were just having uh, two capacitors. One the source, and the one is the uh, another one is the load capacitance. But here we will have several capacitances. We will have several source capacitors. Okay. Mainly we will have several source capacitances. And mass idea, mass idea is, is generally uh, is that only that uh, uh, what mass idea is that uh, is it is so simple that you, uh, as I told you, we uh, the whole problem is what. We cannot use such a big capacitor. So what we will uh, use the capacitor, we will charge the capacitance in parallel. Charge the capacitor, maybe CS, okay, CS in parallel. And discharge them and discharge them in series. Okay, this was the concept of what mass. Means charge the capacitance in parallel so that all of them are getting charged at the same instant. Then what discharge them in series through the spark gaps. That is what the that was the idea of Marx, and we will see how it, he attained that now. Okay. So first of all, let us discuss the circuit. Okay. First of all, let us discuss the circuit. Okay. I will draw a circuit, and so, uh, during my explanation, you will be able to see uh, the circuit. Uh, as an image file uh, uh, in this uh, in the same thing. Okay. First, let us discuss the whole circuit so that you will have an understanding, a proper understanding. So, uh, as uh, first of all, we we uh, always we will have our AC only. So, uh, this uh, we will have some AC supply like this. Okay. Then we will use a varia to connect it to our a high voltage transformer. Okay. So this is uh, this is what we have. We have AC here, and this is what this is a varia. So that we we are able to adjust the AC. So that again we will be able to uh, we will be able to adjust the high voltage uh, AC that is produced here. So now at this instant you have your high voltage AC. Let me say we have around like 100 kV or something. So you have your high voltage AC, and then what? Then uh, uh, you have your Cockroft voltage circuit. Okay. Then you have your Cockroft voltage circuit. So here you have a resistance, then a capacitance. Right. This is what your Cockroft voltage circuit is. Then you have a diode like this. Then here also you have a diode. Right. So as you know, after uh, this is like a single state shown here. So whatever be the voltage here, you will have a two times uh, V here. So that is what a single stage Cockroft voltage double circuit will do. Now, once we uh, reach here, the, uh, once we reach here, up to this point, this is called as DC generating section. Okay, up to this point, whatever we wrote. Okay, this is what this is nothing but talk about voltage circuit. Okay, this is the resistance R. This is C. Uh, then what? This is diode D1 and this is diode D2. Right. You are familiar with the circuit. You, you can take output across this. So this section is what is called as uh, what DC generation section. Okay. So this section is called as what? DC generating section. Okay, high voltage DC generating section. So that now here we achieved what? We have already achieved high voltage DC here. From, there, from here on we have our uh, what? We have our uh, voltage multiplier section. Okay, so this much I think you don't have any confusion. And here let me put my first charging resistance. Okay. Then what? Then you will have your source capacitance CS here as shown here. Okay, this is your source capacitor CS1. I am marking it as CS1 because we will have any more stages. Okay, since I don't have much space here, I am going to start from this. So I think you understood the DC uh, generator sections, right? Or I will go for some some more extent. So this is CS1. And what then you have your RD and RE. So that is what you used to have. So this is a spark gap and you have a RD which is distributed. This is RD1 and this also is same RD1. Okay. And this is your discharge capacitor RE1. I am marking it as RE1 because I am going to have an RD2 and RE2 as well. So this is my 
uh, first section in the voltage multiplier part and this is what this is nothing but rch again in order to charge your next uh, source capacitance like this this is what this is cs2 and this is s1 okay similarly i will have several sessions like this okay i will have uh, several sessions like this so for your understanding i am going to redraw it from what this position so so after reaching here this this much is what dc generating only but afterwards after this what it is this is the voltage multiplier section which i am going to draw again because i cannot uh, fit it in the complete board okay and uh, once uh, during the explanation you will be able to see the complete circuit uh, as an image file on the screen okay that's all that you will have a better understanding but now i want i want to draw it and show it so that you will have a much more better understanding so let us start from here okay first i will i have what i have my cs1 here as shown here cs1 here and i have my rcs means for to charge the other one here what i have my re1 right then another capacitor cs2 then what again rcs another capacitance cs3 then what again my rcs again another capacitor cs4 and again what my re so this is how it is the so this is cs1 okay let me mark it Okay, so what this is? What this is my CS one, this is CS two, this is CS three, and this is CS four. Okay, now in between the in between this, I have my spark gap as well as R D also. So let me draw that also now. Now itself. So that is one. Then this is next is spark gap. Okay. This is another spark here. Okay. Now let us mark clearly. So this is CS1, CS2, CS3, CS4, which are what, which are nothing but the load capacitors. And here all along you will have what the charging resistances are CS all along here. Okay. These are the charging resistances, and this is what this is the R D1. I already told you distributed on the two hands of the spark here. R D1. R D1. R D one, R D one, and here on the base you have what R E E one or a lot. Okay, so these are what this, this, uh, now like this you have different sessions. Okay, now <coughs> let me mark this points. Okay, this is A and this is B, this is C, this is D, this is E, this is F, and this is G. Okay, so this much is my voltage multiplier section. Okay, let us see what will happen. Once I apply my high voltage here, once I apply my high voltage here, right? Here I apply my high voltage. We are able to charge. Here also we I have an RCS, so we are able to charge all this capacitance. You can see all RCS are here, and we are applying our voltage across this. So all this capacitance of CS1, CS2, CS3, CS4, I can charge to a potential whichever I am applying here. Okay, let me say that voltage B V. Okay, whatever high voltage DC I am applying, that voltage is V, and to that potential your source capacitance of CS1, CS2, CS3, CS4, all of them are charged in parallel. Right, all of them will be getting charged through this RCS. Now I am, I would like to. I I tell you the purpose of RCS here. What is the purpose of RCS? You can ask me why uh, I should use a charging. We always use a charging as a RCS, but to limit this current. Okay, to limit the charging current. Understood? So we have to limit the charging current. So for that we use our charging resistance RCS. So this way all of the CS1, CS2, CS3, CS4, all of them like a the point A, C, E, G. They are all at a potential of what? Here you have V. Here also you have V. Here also you have V. Here also you have the potential V. Right. Now particularly at 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 A we have potential V. And now in between you have the spark gaps. Right. Let me mark them as S1, S2, and S3. Okay. Let me mark it as S1, S2, and S3. Okay. So here and afterwards, after this you have another branch like this. Which is the S4 also? Okay. After that, what will come? We will discuss. Okay. So this is my S4, and this is again what R B1. 
R P one, and here also I have a graph R P one. Okay, we will discuss about that later. But now concentrate up to this session. So here, what you are going to see is that you have S one, S two, S three, and S four. Four, four what? Four spark gaps. Then if you, if I take S one as the dis, uh, gap distance, then what? S one, S two, S three, S four variables are the gap distance. Then we make a uh, make this gap in a manner that. The gap distance s1 is lesser than s2, lesser than s3, lesser than s4. Means we make it in an ascending order. Means here your gap distance is smaller, here comparatively higher, here more higher, here it will be the most. Understood? So this way we will make it in an ascending order as set up here. So and we also make sure that what uh, what I told you here you already have this high voltage DC at V. Okay. At the potential V, at the potential V, your s1 will not operate. Your S1 will not operate or will not break down. Understood? At potential V, your S1 is not going to break down. So that condition we maintain. So once these are all charged, anyhow, when your S1 itself is not going to break down at the potential V, definitely because of having a higher gap distance, your S2, S3, and S4 are also not going to break down. Correct? Now under this condition, we will apply a triggering. Okay, we will apply a triggering so that the switch S1 is going to break down. Okay, normally, normally if you keep at the potential V, that is not going to break down. But we intentionally apply a trigger. Okay, we will see how it is done later. We will intentionally apply a trigger, triggering mechanism, so that your S1 is what break down. And what that means what that you have a conduction here. Once you have a conduction. This is the potential at V. This uh, uh, V is the potential at A, and at potential at B means what? If once it conducts, well, then what? You can say R D one is very smaller. So what? Your V A will be equal to V B, right? So when spark gap is operating, your V A will be equal to V, right? Which is equal to what? V only. Here we had the potential V. Here you can see it's a short circuit path because your R D value is going to be lesser. So once it's short circuit, once you have your uh, spark gap uh, under breakdown, then you will have the same potential whatever you had on the A point. So V and V and V B will be equal to V. Now is the interesting point. You already have a potential here, and this is the point where you are grounding it. You already have potential of V here, and what will be that all? Uh, and what this capacitor is already charged to what? Capacitor is already charged to V. So at point C, you will have a potential of 2V, right? Whatever be the potential V with respect to ground, this is the potential V, and plus what? Because of the spark gap, you have we got a potential at the or V at the point B. So V plus V, V C will be equal to what? V C will be equal to what? V uh, V plus V or V C will be equal to 2V. Okay. So this is the important point here. Okay. Once your S1 is conducting, then The uh, voltage at the C point will become two times the potential. So here you will have a voltage of two V, right? Now it has become two V. Now your S two is set so that it is not going to break down the voltage of V. But at the potential of two V, at the potential of two V, what will happen? Your S two is going will break down at that instant. It need not have triggering. Triggering is only applied to the first switch S one. S two, S three, S four. At a higher potential, it is going to break down. Anyhow, so at uh, since you have a potential of two V here, at that potential, this S two is going to break down because it is have it is not that small as S one. It is a bit higher, but what enough to break down at a potential of V two. So because of that, again, what your S two break break down at which voltage? At two V voltage of C. Now, uh, once it breaks down, what will be the potential at D? Your potential at V D will be equal to what two V. Now, again, whatever I have told you, here you have potential of two V, and across this you have potential of what V. So, two V plus V at point E, what will be at point E? What will be your potential? You can see here what here because since uh, this is short circuited, here already you have potential of two V plus V. So, total potential at V E will be three V. Now similarly you can think now once V potential at V E is three V this will break down S three now your S three will break down so that potential at F will be what three V again whatever the potential at E that will become the potential at F so this is three V so this also will become what at F also you will have potential of three V right now at point G what will be the potential adding this potential across the capacitor your total potential at G point will be what 
for me. Okay, it's a mess, but I think I think I, I, uh, I think you can understand. Okay, so total potential at the point G will be for me uh, when this all switches are operating. Clear? And now uh, this mess is ready, right? Now uh, uh, once you are now I am going to rub off some of these parts that we can do. So this way we made a potential of 4V at this point. We made a potential of 4V at this point. Now comes, uh, comes the last section here. So here I have my switch and here is my RE. So this is what RP1, RP1 and this is S4 and this is RE1 just as these all. These all are RE1s. Now, here we I have a 4V voltage. Now uh, we, are, we will come to the end of uh, ending part of this circuit. Okay. After this, we have a circuit like this. What our load capacitors? Understood. Still here we uh, we were what just made building up the voltage. That is why this whole part is called as voltage multiplying section. Correct. Now we will come to the wave shaping part. This wave shaping section have what? This is our RD2 and this is CB. Okay. Here our RD1 is distributed all over and here you have a, uh, you have got RD2 and here you have CB. Understood. So this is CB and uh, you, you have your discharge capacitance, uh, discharge resistance as well. So this is the RE2. Up to here we have RE1 which is distributed and here this lamp RE2. Okay. So this part is called as what the wave shaping part. Now you can think. Now we are getting into working again. 4V is the voltage at this point and once 4V happens here, S4 which is having the largest gap that also will break down and you will have 4V work well, at this point you will have potential of 4V. Okay. And at this point you have potential of 4V and the, this will get, this capacitance is what capacitance will get charged to a potential of 4V. Okay. So the charging process will happen. And once it is charged, this is the maximum voltage and once it is charged to this extent, then what? Then your source capacitance as well as your load capacitance, all of them will what? Discharge. All of them will be discharged through what? Your REs. All of them will discharge through RE. Okay. Creating your impulse. Okay. During the last part of the charging, you will have what? The impulse waveforms. Initial part and during discharging, you will have this session. Understood. During each breakdown of this capacitor, uh, breakdown of these things, you will not have any output. Why? Because you are taking the output, you are, you are taking the output across the load capacitance, right? And till your S4 is not breaking down, your voltage is not applied to the wave shaping session, and you will not have any output. So this will happen in sessions like first S1, then S2, then S3. All of them will break down so that you have voltage multiplication. And afterwards, once it happens, then only what? Then only and there is charging of this load capacitance happen and then only you will have output understood so again that will depend on what this rd2 re2 and all this resistance resistance and capacitance is values okay but that will happen only at the last instant whenever your s4 is uh, s4 starts uh, breakdown or s4 is breakdown and it is conducting then only your impulse waveform you are getting understood so this is the whole working of this part okay I think you understood. Okay, I have you provided you notes, so go through that. Uh, in a, uh, go, go through that. Uh, go through that, and you will understand better. If you have any doubts, we will discuss during the contact classes. So, so this is the working. Let me summarize it here. So we have three parts. One is what. One is the DC generation. As I told or told you already, what is this? This is nothing but our Cockroft. Walton circuit, our Cockroft Walton circuit. Okay, normally we are looking for a voltage of 100 kV to uh, 200 kV uh, with what? With our uh, Cockroft Walton doubler circuit. Okay, Cockroft voltage, voltage doubler circuit. We are looking for a voltage of what? 100 kV to 200 kV, and we can control the voltage by uh, uh, by varying the variac in the input side. Understood. The high voltage transformer before that we have a variac. By adjusting that we will be able to vary the high voltage voltage also, uh, high voltage side voltage as well. So we are looking for 100 kV to 200 kV. Now the second part is our voltage multiplier section. Second part is our voltage multiplier section. Okay. 
I think now you are able to see uh, the circuit uh, in the screen. Okay. Now, since you are able to see, you can see what you can see that the first part consists of the media high, the high voltage transformer and the uh, voltage uh, cocker of voltage dimmer circuit. That is what is going to provide you the high voltage DC. After that, you have your voltage multiplier section consisting of what S1, S2, S3, S4 spark gaps along with all CS1, CS2, CS3, CS2 capacitors also. So, uh, including all this, you are, what you are able to do, you are able to multiply your voltage to a level of what? 4V. Okay. So, that is the voltage, uh, that is what voltage multiplier section do. The REs that you are going to see in the image, that are, that those are for what? The discharge part. RCH is for charging. RE is for what? The discharge part. RCH and RD both. That the damning resistance is also mixed in a distributed manner in the voltage multiplier section. So, that is the voltage multiplier section. Then the third part is nothing but wave shaping section. It is called wave shaping, right? Why it is called so? As I told you, once all this voltage multiplication happened, then what? Then your load capacitances, where you are taking output, that will get charged and that will get discharged along with the source capacitances. So that point is when you have your impulse voltage and uh, the main uh, part is that the as per standard, you have you should have a particular rise time as, a as well as a tail time. For a lightning impulse, it is different. For a switching impulse, also it differs. So to provide that, uh, what you are keeping the RD to and RE to there, and as per what you are testing, okay, you might be testing something, right? So depending on that, you may have to change your RD2 and RE2 value. So that we will change or we will adjust in order to get the correct impulse wave shape. Understood? And uh, when you are talking about uh, things having a lower surge impedance value, then you may have to change your RD1 and RE1 also, which is distributed all over the impulse generator. That also you have to change. But under, uh, no, in, under normal condition or with a higher surge impedance, you have to change only RD2 and RE2 so that you will be able to adjust the time delays and you have the correct standard impulse waveform uh, uh, in your uh, where, 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 uh, in, in, in your output. Okay, so these are this is the three uh, stages. Once again, DC generation, voltage multiplier, and wave shaping section. These are the three stages, and we explain these functions also. For more clarity, you can get into uh, the, the notes that I have provided you, and we will discuss in more detail if you want when uh, when you are here during your, your contact classes.